Now the current BMW and the current Hondas RRR to triple R, uh, which funny we refer to it as the triple R, but there's actually four R's in the name. I, they, they are. It was was the, the, the there's also the BMW with like very racy Quattro R yeah. or so it's all they the do. So they're inline fours, and normally they're all ride by wire. That's standard now, but normally all four throttle bodies would behave in sync. They would all do exactly what you know. They're all tied together. Yeah, from the carburetor days, you would balance your carburetors. Yeah, they all behave the same. Now, what the TC would do is they have IMUs, so it senses your lean angle, and it goes, oh, you're at 45 degrees. I, when you ask for 60, I'm only going to give you 10, because you can't handle 60 at this angle. That's what my bike does. That's what your bike does, okay? Now, these newer ones, they can get even more clever, and they call it a split throttle body, meaning these cylinders have a throttle body that's linked, and these have a throttle body that's linked, meaning that they can operate independently which is wild. Now what, now this sounds probably right now sounds simple and basic, but how this works, imagine you're leaned over at 50 degrees basically, and you're coming out of a corner and you wanna start getting on the throttle. Grip is at a premium. It is very low traction, even with race, sticky race tires, it's hard to get grip. Well, because we're always, we're always balancing grip with lean angle. Yep. With the front tire, as we brake, we're balancing brake pressure with lean angle, and as we accelerate out of the corner, we're balancing lean angle with throttle. Yeah. So that's why grip is always at a premium. So imagine you're coming out of a corner, and if you're familiar with the idea of a big bang engine, imagine you start opening the throttle and only two of your throttle bodies begin to open. It basically makes the engine a two-cylinder when the IU yeah. senses you at a certain lean angle. And because it's only two of them, the bank, the firing order effectively makes the bike start to behave like a big bang engine, which is go, go do a quick Google search on big bang engines. They were derived in MotoGP strictly because of how much grip they would. Right, because it gives like a, a whole engine RPM for the tire to recover and yep. gain grip. And they get another Right. Hit of As opposed power. to when the pulses are really close. Yeah, yeah they're, they're just big seats. So now if you go look at MotoGP, they all run some version of a Big Bang firing order. None of them run Screamer engines anymore. So Screamer would be all four are perfectly evenly spaced. One, two, three, four. One, yeah. two, three. And it never gives the tire enough time to grip again before you hit it again with another hit of power. Which a lot, like the V4s are like uh, one, two, three, four. Exactly. One, two, yeah. Three, four, There's four, a little bit. And that's the benefit of these things. So... This thing basically turns your inline four screamer into a big bang exactly when you want it. And then once you're stood upright and going, it now resyncs them and opens them all up together. And now it's a screamer again when you want it. Now, this does sound similar to me. And I wonder if it came from this. The Honda V5, which is one of the greatest engines of all time, they were playing with this early on on D cell that it would feed fuel into the middle of the three cylinder bank. Mm to control engine braking and prevent the hop and the, yeah. the stuff like that. This sounds like it's taking it to the next level, giving you that same kind of intervention yep. where it's probably more critical, yeah. especially in a race environment where you want to go to full yeah. throttle as soon as you possibly can, to allow you to feed the throttle on smoother and more linear, more progressive as you're taking my lean angle coming out of the corner. Exactly. And, it's, and it is, th if you think about it, like, there's not any extra components. Maybe there's an extra solenoid, I guess, or servo potentially on the throttle body. Oh, and yeah, linkage would have to be split in half. So you would have to have two smalls and this yeah. is one long right. rod. So, but not overly complicated, not adding a bunch of work. Pretty simple, a little bit of songs. Sorry. Yeah. And it makes such a difference on the grip coming out of corners. So I come out of a corner with the guy who's also on this BMW that does the split throttle. And we're in the middle of the corner together and we start exiting together and I'm following him. And his bike all of a sudden sounds awful. Sounds like it's not running right. Because it's effectively turned into a twin or a weird sound. A weird twin, like an offset. But it it grips. It looks like the rear tire is Velcro to the ground. No it has so much grip. That you can actually, like, you're behind him and you can see the, how the tire is able to recover. It just and matches the rear tire on the ground and then disappears in the distance and pulls bike lengths. Because you and I, like, you're faster than I am and, and I'm comfortable with this this is fine but it, like when coming out of a corner when you're like we had a track day on friday it was a huh? really good day i was really fun but like uh i was on a slightly harder rear tire than i normally run and it was sliding everywhere yeah, yeah. and it's kind of fun but i'm not in a race environment because i for how like i can 
whatever, but it's like kind of fucking and hopping and you feel like a superhero, but it's not especially fast when yeah. it's happening. This thing looked, uh, I mean, the way it gets out of a corner looks unreal. And it's a perfect example of something that was understood and developed inside motorsports. And they're like, well, now how do we move this idea downstream to a normal person who can buy it? And that was not on like a $40,000 M1000. He rides an S1000. That's a thing you can just go buy. So I know this is going to be a topic with a lot of people. So I'm going to ask it. <sighs> At what point does this technology, is it making it too easy? So that's a great, and I guess if you are a purist, right? Fair enough. Should we all run biased tires? Should we run drum brakes? Should our flesh be on our bus? Like all of these things, because because it's like, oh, well, that's cheating. It's like, well, no, it's not like there's rules in racing. And if you break those rules, that's cheating. But if you're inside those rules, we've all agreed before we showed up to the race, that's not cheating. 